So now let's look at hydrogen sulfide. So hydrogen sulfide, we see that this is a gas made up of hydrogen and sulfur. It is highly poisonous, whereby it occurs naturally in some deposits mixed with natural gas. Like for example, uh, a natural gas such as a rotten egg. So the smell of a rotten egg, that smell you feel, this is a rotten egg, so that is the smell of hydrogen sulfide. So it can occur naturally in some deposits, like for example, we have that uh, from the rotten egg. So below, below is a diagram, or below is a setup to show the preparation of hydrogen peroxide in the laboratory, whereby we react dilute hydrochloric acid with ion 3 sulfide. So this dilute, uh, dilute hydrochloric acid, we reacted with ion 2 sulfide in order to obtain hydrogen sulfide. And you should take note that hydrogen sulfide is being collected over warm water. You should also take note in an, in an exam or in question that this water has been labeled as warm. Because if it is labeled as cold water, we know that hydrogen sulfide is highly soluble in cold water. But in warm water, it is not soluble. So... The collection method is over warm water method. So if you have been asked to name the collection method, don't say over water method. Be specific and say it is collected by using over warm water method. So that is the best definition for this collection method. As you can see, this is the equation for the reaction whereby we are reacting ion 2 sulfide uh, plus hydrochloric acid to get ion 3, uh, rather ion 2 chloride plus hydrogen sulfide in gaseous form. So you see that this gas must be collected over water since it is highly soluble in cold water again. So this gas can be dried using anhydrous calcium chloride. So you should never use conch sulfuric acid to dry hydrogen sulfide. Why you shouldn't you use conch sulfuric acid to dry hydrogen sulfide? It's because conch sulfuric acid is going to oxidize the hydrogen sulfide from being hydrogen sulfide to sulfur and water molecules. So these are what you are going to obtain. So if you react hydrogen sulfide gas or if you bubble hydrogen sulfide gas in conch sulfuric acid, we're going to obtain yellow sulfur and traces of water molecules. So it should only and only be dried using anhydrous calcium chloride and not conch sulfuric acid. So apart from that, let's now look at the physical properties of hydrogen sulfide. So what are the physical properties of hydrogen sulfide? So the first physical property of hydrogen sulfide, we see that it is a colorless gas. The next one, we see that it has a rotten, pungent smell. That smell of a rotten egg, that is the smell of hydrogen sulfide. So it has a rotten, pungent smell. After that, we see that it is less denser than air. And that's why it is being collected using the upward delivery, uh, the over water method. Ap uh, apart from that, we see that it is slightly soluble in cold water. So cold water should never be used uh, in the collection. We should only use warm water. So apart from that, we see that it has a melting point of negative 82.9 degrees Celsius, and then it is a highly poisonous gas. So if you expose yourself too much in the gas, you are going to feel, or rather, it's going to poison, begin poisoning the cells. So it is a highly poisonous gas which should always be avoided under any cost. As well, we see that it is insoluble in warm water, but soluble in cold water. So remember we say that we are not collecting it uh, using cold water, but we are using warm water. Why? Because using warm water, it is highly insoluble. It will not dissolve. But in cold water, it readily dissolves in cold water, forming acids. So... Mm, what are the chemical properties of hydrogen sulfide? So for the first chemical property of hydrogen sulfide, let's look at the first one, which is now that dissolution in water. So for the dissolution in water, you'll say that it dissolves in water to form weak acidic solution, which is uh, uh, we have high sulfurous, yeah, we have sulfurous and sulfuric acid. So it dissolves in water to form these acids. So you see that the aqueous hydrogen sulfide is a very weak dibasic acid. By this, it forms two types of salts, that is hydrogen sulfide and a sulfide. So it can, be, it can form these two types of salts very easily. Why? Because it is a very weak dibasic acid. So it can be able to form hydrogen sulfides. Maybe, for example, we have sodium sulfides, sodium hydrogen sulfide, 
potassium hydrogen sulfide, calcium hydrogen sulfide, and also it can also be able to form sulfides like the same sodium sulfide, potassium sulfide, magnesium sulfide, calcium sulfide. Why? Because it is a weak dibasic acid. So the examples of these sulfides are, uh, they are very many, there are very many sulfides. And why does it form this sulfide? Because it is a weak dibasic acid. So the next chemical property, apart from reacting with water, you'll say that it burns with oxygen, it burns in limited oxygen with a blue flame to form sulfur, uh, sulfur and water. So in limited oxygen, it forms sulfur and water as per the equation. But in excess oxygen, it forms sulfur four oxide and water. So in limited oxygen, it forms sulfur and water, but in excess oxygen, it will form sulfur four oxide and water. So apart from that, the other chemical property is that it reduces acidified potassium permanganate to a colorless manganese 2 solution. So that is the other chemical property of hydrogen sulfide. So it reduces acidified potassium permanganate to a colorless manganese 2 solution. So the other chemical property also about reduction will say that it reduces acidified potassium dichromate to a green chromium 3 solution. So the chromium 6 are reduced to chromium 3 by hydrogen sulfide as per the equation that you can see. So it also reduces the orange acidified potassium dichromate to a green chromium 3 solution. So apart from that, also another reduction we see that it reduces hydrogen peroxide to water followed by a yellow precipitate of sulfur or rather a yellow solid of sulfur or rather yellow sulfur powder. So what happens is that it reduces hydrogen peroxide to water and then it also forms a yellow powder of, of sulfur. So that's exactly what happens here as per the equation that you can see. Apart from that, we'll, uh, we'll also say about reduction and say that it reduces nitric acid to nitrogen oxide gas, which is brown in color, and then it also forms a yellow solid of sulfur. So if you are reacting nitric acid, you are going to realize we are forming brown fumes. So these brown fumes are brown fumes of nitrogen four oxide and the yellow sulfur powder that will be formed. So apart from that, another chemical property will say that it reduces dilute sulfuric acid to sulfur. That is dilute sulfuric acid. It reduces dilute sulfuric acid to sulfur. Like for example, if it reacts with sulfuric acid, we are going to get yellow sulfur and water molecules. It reacts with metals to form precipitate of metal sulfide. Like for example, if it reacts with copper sulfate, we are going to get copper 2 sulfide plus sulfur oxide plus hydrogen gas. So for the other metals, we see that the other metal sulfide are precipitated as shown below. Like for example, if we have zinc ions reacting with the hydrogen sulfide in sulfur ions, we're going to get zinc sulfide. If we have lead ions reacting with the sulfur ions, we're going to get lead 2 sulfide ion, we're going to get ion 2 sulfides. So you see that most of the sulfides are insoluble in water. Most of them, they are insoluble, they do not dissolve in water. Only the sulfide of sodium, potassium, and ammonium are soluble. So this basically follows the reactivity series and the solubility of salts that we checked and we looked in form 2, whereby for the solubility of salts, we say that all nitrate salts are soluble. Apart from that, we say that all the salts of sodium, potassium, and ammonium are soluble. So in the reactivity series, we see that we have potassium, then we have sodium. So for these two, in the reactivity series, all salts of sodium and potassium, they are soluble. So we have sodium, potassium, and ammonium. If we have any salt of sodium, potassium, and ammonium, they are soluble. So we know that all sulfates, all sulfates, they are insoluble except the sulfates of sodium, potassium, and ammonium. So those are the only ones that are soluble. So apart from that, we see that sodium hydroxide um, and hydrogen sulfide, if we react these two, we are going to get sodium hydrogen sulfide plus water molecules. So that is just a basic reaction whereby we are reacting sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen sulfide. So if we do this, we are going to get a hydrogen sulfide, which is sodium hydrogen sulfide. As well, if we react potassium hydroxide plus hydrogen sulfide, we are going to get a soluble potassium hydrogen sulfide plus water molecules. So in this experiment we see if excess sodium hydroxide is reacted in this experiment, there is the formation of sodium sulfide as you can see in the experiment. So 
This will only and only be formed if we react excess sodium hydroxide with hydrogen sulfide. So remember, sodium hydroxide is aqueous, hydrogen sulfide is aqueous. So if we react them together, we're going to get sodium sulfide plus water molecule. If we react a limited amount of sodium hydroxide, we are going to get sodium hydrogen sulfate. But if we react excess, we are going to get sodium sulfide plus water molecule. So let's see, how can we be able to test for the presence of hydrogen sulfide? So let's look at testing for the presence of hydrogen sulfide. So we're going to use a filter paper, we're going to use lead acetate or lead ethanoate to do this test. So the first procedure will say that moisten the filter paper with lead ethanoate or lead acetate. After doing that, expose the filter paper in a gas jar full of hydrogen sulfide. So in that filter paper that is wet, expose it in a gas jar full of hydrogen, of hydrogen sulfide. So the filter paper is going to turn color to black. If the filter paper will turn color to black, you will automatically know that that is hydrogen sulfide. Because this black will be a presence of lead to sulfide. So this lead to sulfide is black in color, which will be embedded on the filter paper. So we're going to get lead to sulfide, sulfide plus ethanoic acid. So if you, will go, if you are going to form the lead to sulfide, you'll know that that gas you are testing, that is hydrogen sulfide. And that is how you test for the presence of hydrogen sulfide.